What's up, my people? Um, I have kind of an off-topic question. I know um, P226 has been making a lot of videos about uh, various things. This is not any of those topics. I have a question for you guys. <clears throat> How many of you guys buy online pretty consistently? eBay, Amazon, any of, I, I mean, there's obviously millions of online stores now, but those are the, you know, the big ones. I don't seem to have too much problems, too many problems with if I go to a direct store, like if I went to Macy's.com and I wanted to buy something for my wife and I didn't feel like going to the store and I just bought it online, I don't usually have a problem with that. And eBay, I've had very good luck with. I know that sometimes eBay, and in fact, I do remember getting a really shitty product once on eBay and the guy wouldn't even, eBay took his side and they, and they wouldn't even let me return it. It was a knockoff, but... Amazon, on the other hand, surprising amount of screw-ups and junk, just straight up false advertising. They said it was going to be one thing, and it wasn't that thing. And then when you contact them, they say, well, we never said it was brand new. Yeah, but you didn't say it was used. What the fuck? You didn't say it was used. You have to say that it's used. Um... I ordered a DVD, uh, like a Disney movie DVD for my boys. And uh, when it came, right away I knew it was, it was going to be a problem. Because the DVD wasn't wrapped in plastic like they always are. It was just You just opened it right up. And it had the name of the movie on there and everything looked great. And then you put it in the DVD player and it's like... <laughs> and it was like a black screen for like 30 seconds and then it would like be like thinking and then it would go hit menu and then you hit menu and it's like it's like all this pixelated shit and then I'm on like pressing play and then it actually plays the movie for about 10 seconds and then it freezes and then it jumps to like 10 minutes later in the movie I'm like dude somebody made this fucking thing on their computer I don't understand, like, of course I returned it, right? So I returned it, I got compensated for it, I got my money back. Why would they even go through that? Like, it was clearly a fake, like a knockoff. Why would they even go through that? Are they, are they figuring that, out of all the people that order that movie, only a certain percentage of them will return and ask for their money back, and other people will just say, ah, fuck it, and they'll just throw it in the garbage and not, not ask for a refund. And how do they expect to turn a profit is what I'm asking when you, when you create fake junk and sell it online. Because when you go through Amazon, they have a very, they have a pretty easy refund process. You just put it in there. You say, I need a refund. I, I need a refund on this. It was garbage. And then you take it to the UPS store and it's actually free to return it. So it's, it's, it, it's inconvenient because you have to drive to the goddamn UPS store. Um, and that pisses you off, but it's, it's, it's relatively easy to return. So I, I don't even understand the motivation for these people selling garbage. You know, like it's like the guy that walks up to you in, in a, in a downtown area and he opens up his, his, uh, you know, Jack, and he's like, I got, I got this and that, I got, I got that, you know, and it's all, and it's all fake garbage, right? You pay him cash for that if you're stupid enough to, to buy it, and then he's gone, and you never see him again. There's no recourse. You have no recourse. You, you just got ripped off, right? But on Amazon, there's recourse. So why do these ripoff artists continue to do that? And they're not everywhere. They're just, there's a good percentage of them on Amazon that try to do that kind of stuff. And I guess they must just figure that some people won't go through the pain of returning it. And so they get to keep their money. But um, another thing I want to say is I went back to that seller and I was looking at their feedback and they have like 4,000 reviews, 96% 
five, right? And I'm thinking, they all have to be fake. You know, it's like when you read reviews, why would you even, I don't even read five-star reviews on Amazon. I don't even read them. I go straight to the ones, the twos, and the threes. Ones are usually people who are really, really pissed off. Twos and threes, even fours, I'll, I'll, I'll read. Because if you're not giving them a, a perfect score, I want to know why. But, you know, for a stupid DVD, like a Disney DVD, I, like, I'm not making a gigantic investment here. So I was like, I didn't do a ton of research like I would if I was buying a guitar online or something like that. I mean, it was a $15 DVD. Um, but I know if I go back and read through the one and two star reviews, it's all going to be, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake, didn't work. You know, I, I know that's what I'm going to read. But what, what blows me away is that there's only, there's probably only 20 of those compared to the 3,800 something reviews that are five-star reviews. Um, I think people fit, pay for fake reviews on, on Amazon. I'm, I'm positive they do. Anyway, you just, you can't replace the brick and mortar store. You can't replace it. I mean, my, my wife buys stuff online and, you know, she'll buy shoes or clothes or jewelry or whatever. And then the jewelry gets here and it's a lot smaller than it looked in the picture. And, you know, she, she thinks it's a necklace that's going to come down to here. And she puts it on. It's like a choker that just like barely fits around her neck. And she's like, okay, I got to return this. And, you know, or they send her the wrong color shoes or the wrong size shirt or whatever. And I always tell her, like, how many times do you run into that problem when you actually go into the physical store and look at the item that you're buying? You know you're getting the right color. You know you're getting the right size. You're, because you're there. You're picking it out. You're trying it on. But I guess that's what you pay for convenience. You, you, you pay an inconvenience, actually, for the convenience. Right? It's convenient to shop online. Yet when they get your order wrong, which is a much higher percentage than you would think it would be or that you hope it would be, it's very inconvenient at that point because you have to fill out this crap and like the refund stuff and then you got to go to the UPS store and take it back or wherever you're going. Um, it just seems to fit the theme nowadays of it's like the big lie that technology makes our lives easier. It does not. I mean, right now I'm working. I mean, I know it doesn't look like I'm working, but I'm sitting at my desk. Just taking a little break here. But uh, I'm an underwriter and I look at documents all day and all my documents are online, right? I don't have physical papers that I'm looking at, right? I, I'm looking at documents that are online, documents that have been scanned into the system. And uh, that's great, right? I don't have stacks of papers on my desk. I don't, I don't, you know, have stacks of files behind me or anything like that. But when the system goes down, then I just sit here and I do nothing. I wait for IT to fix, fix this, get the system back up. And there have been times when the system's down for an entire day. Can't do a damn thing all day. Or the system's running stupid slow and you can look at one document every 20 minutes as opposed to just like flying through them all and getting them all done in 20 minutes. Um, or when you upload a document, it's all blurry and fuzzy because the, the whatever, it got pixelated during the upload and it was like, oh, okay, I can't read this, uh, you know, and I send it back and I say, I can't read this, please upload it again, blah, blah, blah. Just seems that the price of convenience seems to be very hefty. It's a very hefty price that we pay for so-called convenience. I don't know if it's worth it.